Hey, this is Justin. And this is Rob. Today, we are ranking the characters of Oshinoko. Robert, we have 14 characters here. Who would you like to start us out with? Pyon Pyon. Pyon Pyon. Easy S. We have to start with Pyon. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we get enough Pyon to know that he's S, do we? But the mystery, the allure of not knowing Pyon is what makes him so special. Can you do Pyon Pyon's voice for me in Japanese? Pyon Pyon. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a full you you are taking Japanese lessons. Give me a full sentence in Japanese with Pyon Pyon's voice. Watashi wa Pyon Pyon. <laughs> That's gotta be at least A yes. tier, right? I think think about it. Where would the girls be without Pyon Pyon's training arc? Which wasn't actually Dead in a gutter. Pyon Pyon. Uh, All right, we'll start. Well, <laughs> <laughs> where would they be without his YouTube influence too? That's true too. I mean it's not like Mem could do anything with her YouTube influence. It didn't really she seem like lie. it, no. <laughs> no. She did bring a lot of yellow glow sticks to that concert, though. Is, is it too ballsy to start with Pyon Pyon at A? No, I, th- I think Pyon Pyon slides very comfortably into A. You know what's tough with this is that there's a lot of characters that I think are should be A and B. So some people are going to have to go in C and D. But that said, it's not Pyon Pyon. I think we just got to start throwing shit at the wall, and then when things get overcrowded, then we got to move things around. And we'll adjust, absolutely. For context, we're doing two for S tier, and then three for everything else. Okay, so we each get an S tier. We each get an S tier. Right. All right, so Pion Pion, A for now. I, Rob, I think we're going to immediately start coming into some predicaments. Like, where does Miyako-chan go? Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> where does Mommy go? Should um, we change this to double Other than tier? on my fate? <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't apply here. Uh, I would say A tier also. That's how I was feeling as well. But I mean, she's the mom that stepped up. All right, we're we're just gonna start stacking this. Stacking it because she's stacked. Uh, what else are we gonna do? <laughs> she also tried selling out two babies to to the media and ruining their lives. In but fairness she did to have her, a deadbeat husband. Exactly, and the babies were a little little much. They were a little bit much. So, I mean, we're here. Might as well just go to the husband. We got to get rid of this double D and just put him down in regular D. Yeah, I mean, he abandoned his beautiful, amazing wife. And he abandoned two potentially celebrity babies that he didn't realize at the time or should have known at the time that they would be doing big things. So he also doesn't have foresight. He did also put eye on the map. But I put herself on the map. He just discovered her. Somebody would have found eye at some point, right? I don't know. She was a country bumpkin at the time. I mean, we we don't have to sit around. We have so many good characters that he's probably going to be D tier anyway. But I I just don't want to slander him all the way there. And to his credit, I'm sure he he didn't handle Ai's death well either. Because, I I mean, it's not explicitly stated, but I'm sure he, you know, genuinely cared about her, right? Yeah, she was his moneymaker, but he also, like cared about her well-being and i think he probably just lost it after like both his single source of success financially and his like his friend or whatever she was to him uh was lost so she's a huge part of his life so he's more so d tier for lack of involvement right he's not necessarily a bad character i mean abandoning your family yeah, probably put you in D-tier. okay that's fair <laughs> d tier i'm fine with it <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to it I, the highest he can go is c tier but uh, we'll, we'll see if he can even okay. do that. Let, what do you got, Rob? Uh, let's go with the Graveur model. <laughs> do I need to make the double D tier again? I, mean, I feel like if we need three people in each tier, she can't go higher than C because her entire character is just being a large chested model with severe back pain. I mean, other than that, what is she really doing other than being Ruby's <laughs> friend, right? She's just Ruby's token friend so that Ruby doesn't feel alone at school. She's not even friends with Ruby. Like, they have that one interaction scene, but she never shows up again. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not... All right, she's going right? to double D tier for I, now. I think it works best there. <laughs> Quadruple, Quadruple D tier. God, the back pain. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Furil. You see, I... But I don't think she goes higher than C. I know you are a big fan of her, but what exactly does she do? Nothing. She does nothing. But also everything. But what is the everything? She's a triple star model actress singer who has no emotions 
but is low-key hilarious in the 30 seconds that she appears in. She left an impression on me. I do love her, her like, deadpan humor. It, it, it really took me by surprise, and I did enjoy it, but once again, the whole point of Oshinoko is your presence, your star power, and it's just told to us that she has star power, but we never actually see it. Yet. I think, I think inevitably she's going to show her stuff. I think that triple threat that she brings is going to be utilized in all sorts of ways between the singing and the acting. So like, maybe she's going to be in the movie. Maybe she's going to be some future idol work. I don't know, but perhaps, she's going to show her face. Perhaps in future seasons, but this is just based on season one. I like her. And in that case, I get that you like her. But we have to be objective here, and she brings nothing to the table other than one funny scene. Excuse me? I like her better than Yuki. Let me say that. Why? I've said my reasons. Yeah, I. you see that I won't argue with you, so if we're putting her in D, I can put Frill in C. I'm fine with that. Frill in C? I have C. nothing to say. Yes. Yuki in D. Yeah, well, I mean, what does Yuki do other than be a third-rate character on a, like, D-list celebrity reality TV show. <laughs> no, she's, like, the number one character. I think I actually was quite charmed by her when she, like, whispers in Aqua's ear in the very beginning, but then she starts playing all the puppet strings a little bit too much for my liking. Yeah, but I guess... In hindsight, like, in early on we think, oh, okay, she's going to be an interesting character, but, like, as things progress, she's the least relevant of everybody on that show. Other than, I guess, the drummer, or whatever the other guy is. Who doesn't even- oh, yeah. I, I forgot about the band guy. He doesn't even get a- he doesn't get a girl, he doesn't get, like, anything else happening to him. He's the biggest loser of that whole, like, reality show. He does have a cougar going after him. <laughs> But I or mean, at least that's what's set up on the show, at he least. He didn't really have to. Well, yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that, though. He was so irrelevant that this pre-made tier list didn't even include him. Yeah, but it also doesn't include the but other Melt guy. But Meltcoon made it. Right? Meltcoon deserves Meltcoon. to make it. I'm not having this fight with about Meltcoon yet. Enough. I mean, I haven't said anything about Meltcoon. I I'm not opposed to Meltcoon being here. Meltcoon is welcome to the party. Meltcoon is a very pivotal, important character to showcase a lot of things that happened from the time skip. So let's not let's not disparage Meltkoon. Let's, let's talk about Meltkoon, Rob. Where do you want Meltkoon? Or you're not ready for this conversation? Meltkoon is Meltkoon is very important to this series as his presence shows us just how talented naturally Aqua is despite Aqua being out <laughs> of acting for a decade. So the contrast of Meltkoon being so absolutely atrocious and terrible just helps us get that visual of how talented naturally Aqua is, right? This is this is like the most accurate but also horseshit argument I've ever heard. <laughs> In addition, Meltkoon also shows us the trials and tribulations that creators and dreamers the trials go and tribulations. Yes, because you have a mangaka who is finally seeing her work get adapted. And we see the heartbreak that she goes through as her series is getting panned because of Meltkoon's lack of talent. And, you know, Meltkoon is, is falling apart at the seams as he's destroying somebody's art. But he comes into play and steps up and slaps Aqua and really, like, puts on the performance of a lifetime. He develops. And Meltkoon, at the very least, earns himself a spot in B for that. I feel like I'm listening to John write an essay in ACS class in 12th grade. <laughs> <laughs> Just absolute we'll BSing. And it sounds so good. We'll put Melkoon. How is Melkoon higher than Frill? He's easy on the eyes, and he actually has a character arc. And some growth. I suppose he has a little bit of growth. Let's talk about... Let's talk about Memcho. <sighs> the Christmas cake. <laughs> Sweet, sweet Memcho. <laughs> Poor, sad Memcho. Lying about her age by almost a decade. It's not a good look for anyone. Least of all her. <laughs> I think Memcho cannot go higher than B, and I could even see her going in C. I'd feel okay with C. I feel like she's a little bit of a, a humor, but also a little bit of a plot device to help boost up B Komachi. I don't think she 
she, she, she's not easy on the eye. She's, she doesn't do anything special so far. She's just, she's just a little bit of light comedy. Yeah, she's like the token cat girl. Like, she's got the whole cat ear fang thing going on. Not really that revolutionary of a design. Uh, like you said, I think she is mostly a plot device because you needed somebody that already had some fame to them to, you know, get Bikomachi off the ground again. And I know Kana had the fame, but she didn't have, like, the social media presence to do it. So you kind of had to have a character like Memcho. And I do appreciate that, like, she's introduced very naturally and organically. Yeah. You know, she's part of Aqua's life on that TV show. And then that transitions into being a part of Bikomachi. So it doesn't feel unearned that she's here. It's just she doesn't bring a lot to the table as far as season one goes of Oshinoko. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree. I would also say that when the audience is like, all three of them could be the center of their own uh, of their own idol group. I was like, you're full of shit. Memcho couldn't could not be the center of her own group. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's basically going to be using a walker in here. She's <laughs> ancient history. You know, she can't be the center of anything. She can hardly stand. She's another reason for the declining population rate in Japan at this rate. <laughs> She is not not a Reiwa era talent. She's going way too far back. We've lost all the mem stands at this point. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't I don't feel good about this. Especially that she's under Meltkun, but I, it's fair. <laughs> it's just fair. All right. Should we get rid of more of the the riffraff? Not the riffraff, but the the not big players what, here. I, what are you talking about? I'm looking at the remaining characters, and there's not a single one that is riffraff. Yeah, not riffraff. Other than maybe Aqua, I guess. <laughs> I'm thinking we go Akane <laughs> next. She's not riffraff. That's rude. Akane's kind of an important character. Yeah, that's non-main characters is what I was saying. Not not riffraff. That's rude to I'm Akane. I'm only seeing main characters remaining. Akane, <laughs> I would say, is a main character. She's a, she's a B-plot character, but I love Akane. Don't get me wrong. I'm just talking about she's not in the family. No, but she's very clearly a character that matters to Aqua because of, you know, all of the stuff with her, you know, researching eye and developing, like, this eye persona and Aqua kind of, like, falling into it. Remember, like, he starts, like, crying when he sees he Akane starts start, like, performing acting yeah he like can't even handle it i think i've left the wrong first impression when i said like b-list character or non-main character akane is my second best girl on this list and I'm, I'm proposing a tier and we can keep talking about her but would you have arguments there um i think she's gonna go there and someone no. else might have to move i think it's fair for her to be an a tier um yeah no a tier for akane makes sense to me um, I mean, she has such an emotional, probably the most emotional scene in the series other than, you know, the first episode. Mm -hmm. She's a very, like, you know, powerful character. So I have no problem putting her in A tier. I'm going to put her at the top of A tier. Maybe behind Pyon Pyon. Above Pyon Pyon? Not, be not above Pyon Pyon. <laughs> I'll relax a little there. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. This is where things get difficult, I think. Because we have two two B's and a C. Somebody has to go to C, and that is difficult for me. I know who you're probably thinking, and it's Director Chan. But I no, love I'm Director Kana. Chan. Oh, come on. No, you are not thinking <laughs> Kana. That's absolute... Oh, I'm not even having... You know what? I gotta calm down. I'm not having this conversation. Maybe Kana it's to Kana. D. Maybe we bring Guru Model up a little bit. It's obviously not Kana, so... For me, that last C, I think, is I, personally. Uh, stop. I don't even want to I don't even want to look <laughs> at Kana and D. That's offensive to me. Okay? <laughs> Christ. I don't think I goes to C. I don't think I goes B of, above B, which I thought I was gonna be bringing the hot take here. But it feels weird to put Milk Coon above I. <laughs> I don't really like it. <laughs> I this Melt Coon just has gone far enough. I feel very strongly about Melt Coon and his modeling career, and you know he he is a looker. And what about I's modeling career in her idol career and her acting career? Uh, yeah, it doesn't exist because she's dead. So Melt Coon has a whole future ahead of him. Doesn't exist. <laughs> you you have this thing in every video we do that involves a dead person. You're like they don't matter anymore. They're dead. <laughs> no. 
Not, I, I don't want to disrespect the dead. I, don't paint me as some guy that, like, when they're gone, their entire careers get wiped. I'm just saying, for the purposes of Oshinoko, I is not really more than a catalyst for Aqua's revenge. And so the plot, uh, the plot for the 11 episodes that we watched and, and Ruby's dreams, you know, those <laughs> those things exist within those characters. But, you know, I's not really there pushing it along but then other than in spirit. But then there's Melt yeah, who's, there. who's who brought out Aqua's talent that had been latent for a decade. You know, Melt Coon, it can't be said enough how much Melt Coon did for Aqua. And the anime industry as a whole, even though he did a live action show. So, whatever. I don't even know. All right. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be able to agree on this. So, let's just put Kana and C. We'll put I and C. C. Uh, no, no <laughs> a- absolutely not. Absolutely not. Stop touching Kana. I don't appreciate it. Stop. This is, this is getting ridiculous. I guess we have to put Director Kuhn in S tier so that we can make things work. Now we're talking on the same page. <laughs> Wait, what did you... What Aqua, were we talking about Aqua the other time? C, Kana and B, I, I thought he was S. calling Aqua precious and... Uh, reverse <laughs> all of this. We're done. We're done. We can just end this video now. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Are you sure he doesn't call him precious? I believe he calls him precocious, and because English is my second language... Oh, I fucked it up. They can't even go back anymore. Um, uh, I literally looked up the definition of precocious, which is a child acting beyond their age. But I feel like he was calling him precious, like, ironically. Are we going to get into this? No, he was calling him precocious, Rob, for, like, the last... For 15 years, he probably called him that. Either way, I love him. And Either way. And it's very, very wholesome. All right, but, we got we got our three big players here. No, he's not S tier. The conversation is if Wait, we're what? putting him in B <laughs> or C. Khan is S tier. No, put Khan in S tier. Yes, Kana's we each get like our own C. S. No, Khan is S tier. Khan is like B at best. No, Khan is B. Where where do you want? Let's talk about Aqua really quickly. I, I like I, Aqua. I think Aqua's a great protagonist. Aqua's a fantastic protagonist. Uh, he feels more important than Ruby, even though I feel like they're supposed to be, like, co-leaders of the show. But I feel more interested in everything going on with Aqua than I do everything going on with Ruby. Well, personally, I think Aqua and Ruby should both be S, and Connor should go to freaking F tier. This is ridiculous. We are not leaving this video without Kana in S tier. I, I just, like, Kana is so much more important to Aqua than Ruby is. Kana had literally not. Kana had shot for shot, move for move, the same exact performance as I. Yeah, I like, saw that she, YouTube short too. Don't don't pretend you you know things. I'm not pretending I know things. I'm saying if YouTube can see it, Aqua certainly did. So, you know, I I mean I is the driving force, like you said, of this entire show. And in that, Aqua sees Kana, not Ruby. Uh-huh. So. Do with that what you will. Maybe the S tier should be I and Kana by the way you describe how what's important. <laughs> you know, what drives the plot is apparently what's most important to you. And that would be I and Kana. No, no, no. I said I should be in B tier because she drives the plot and Melt Coon should be in C tier. We are that not moving Melt Coon. Was- Melt Coon is going nowhere. <laughs> other than maybe up. <laughs> I think Mama San needs to go down. You can't. Mm. For who? Mm. Are you saying we're dropping uh, Miyako to put Aqua in A? Aqua has to be A or higher. He doesn't have to. This is our list. It's it's our choice. By my choice, he has to go A or higher. Would you would you put him as anything lower than A if this was your list, your stupid I list? I think I'd have him in B below Meltcoon for laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> You're fucking killing me. All right, so he's at least here. We're, how do you feel about Ruby? Because I like Ruby. I think Ruby's so charming, even though she's very simplistic. I feel like Ruby is just a kind of token positive idol at this moment. 
at this juncture. I don't know. Don't that we there's... need a little bit more of that in our lives, Rob? No, but that's what Mem chose. No, Mem. I feel like I, I know that at some point there's going to be more with Ruby, but I feel like as far as season one goes, Aqua's the driving force of the plot, and Ruby and Mem are kind of interchangeable. I mean, they're even fighting over which one to be sent to because here. they're both so similar in their lack of talent. <laughs> Ruby goes from this arc I'm not editing out that silence because that's how I felt. Ruby goes through this arc of having been a debilitated child with probably cancer or some other childborn illness until the age of 12 where she was so used to falling that she had to like stick her arms out that she couldn't dance and then she has this growth arc where she learns how to dance from her mother because she learns how to live for the first time and now she's like living out her dreams that she's had since a previous life like literally 20 something years ago she's been dreaming about this right but on the other hand Miyako is a milf <laughs> I'm not arguing that I just That's feel like Ruby goes to S. Kana, Kana's not a MILF or has an interesting backstory. Who cares about Kana? What do you mean Kana doesn't have an interesting backstory? She's a child star that was abused by her family because they wanted... Uh, it wasn't just any vegetable, okay? It was a bell pepper. So <laughs> relax yourself in front of bell pepper girl. This is this is getting on the point where you're just slandering her character. And I, I don't appreciate it. You're like a tabloid. I mean, I'm just spitting facts. You're not spitting facts. You're just disparaging her bell pepper, bell pepper just... career, which was an important you know what the fact is? aspect of her character development, because she hates bell peppers. The only she does hate bell peppers. The fact is, the only parts that I clicked the right arrow key on in this entire 11 episode masterpiece was Kana's complaining about how nobody loves her. She she ruined that episode. 11 performance because I'm just trying to listen to music and dancing and then she just keeps complaining and complaining. You know what I think the problem is, Justin, is that Kana reminds you too much of yourself. <laughs> so you just, you feel that that pain that you know like, oh, this is hitting close to home, but I'm not too sure why. You know, the constant complaining and complaining and woe is me and you're just trying to like project that onto Kana, who is just really trying to live through all of that pain. If she reminds you of me, then she should definitely go to D tier. <laughs> Here's the thing, By Justin, that argument, I love you, okay? Ugh, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> through all of your faults and through all of your self-hatred, I love you. So you know what? We have- You're S tier in S class, and so is Kana. Oh, don't- we, we are not paying for premium recording services, so we have six minutes before we have to tie this up, Rob. <laughs> I will fight Nothing. you for the next six minutes of my life. <sighs> Enough of the chicanery. All right, there we go. Aqua is in A. Who goes to C? This is the argument. Here's your stupid Kana in S, but she goes behind Ruby. I. I goes to C. Akane goes to B. <laughs> Look, goes by, to C. by my rules, no. <laughs> by my rules, technically Ruby should go to C because she died once. <laughs> then Aqua you know, should go to C. Apparent, according to you, According to you, Death's and Rune's characters, so... Uh, I didn't say... I, no, once they die and they aren't alive anymore, these two happen to get a second chance on life, so they're still relevant to the plot, according to you. Honestly, I think it's even more impressive that you died once, and you're still a character that's alive. Does that make sense? No. Maybe Aqua should go to S and Kana should go to B. Let's, uh, let's stop. <laughs> let's right stop. There. Let's stop. We have four minutes left. Okay. I think... Eyes gotta director go to C. Director or Melt? I think Director or Melt has to go to C. No, it's it's I. Make the argument. I did, I already did. You know what? My <laughs> no, argument no, no. Here's is, the other is not... No, no. I don't want to disparage I. This isn't about I. It's about how great Melt, Kuhn, and Director are. So who goes to B then? I feel okay dropping a Kane to B and Get I to C. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> Here, we will each fall on one sword. Pick your sword to fall on. I will... I, I don't want to have to do it, but I will put I and C. Alright. Then... Mommy Milkers is going to be. Oh, it hurts so much! <laughs> this is this is what you had to do. This is, this is what happens when you put the most plot-driving character all the way to... I mean, it's fucking I! And she's below Milk Coon, Director, and Mommy Milkers over here. <laughs> this is a good list, Justin. 
I, I really, really feel like we did one of our best jobs of a ranking. This is 30 minutes of rambling. I think it's just 30 minutes of Whoever fighting. watched this all the way to the end is brain dead. Just like you. Just like me. Wow. Was not expecting this. <laughs> I kind of was. <laughs> <laughs> Any parting thoughts, Rob? Now, this is a beautiful list for a beautiful show filled with lots of amazing stars. You know, they all shine bright, but some brighter than others. Like Mel Coon. Like Melt Coon. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> What a disaster. What a list.